Hi, we are Team MC Squared. Our number is 53098, and this presentation will cover our robot code, design, and strategy. This is our team, including mentors from Team Spider. We also virtually mentored a younger fourth grade team called the Lego Leopards. Our whole team was able to work together with the robot for additional bonus in team building skills. We set up a meal schedule so that everyone could work together throughout the challenges and enjoy time together. Although team members were able to choose their primary focus throughout each meeting, everyone was active with the project and robot. We used a variety of in-person and digital platforms for our team to communicate and plan together. We had the most fun using Discord since we were able to talk and send pictures to each other. We use something called the risk reward process intentionally to determine what missions would be worth completing. We ranked every mission by its difficulty and its points reward. The risk versus reward system helped us with the decision to start with the easier missions with high rewards. When we had time, we added the harder missions. Our team has engineered a robot that is capable of reliably solving an amazing 16 missions and scoring 490 points. We get these points without even doing anything. Our top priority for this run was having our robot navigate accurately and precisely. Our run one strategy is to get quick, easy points on the board. This run solves five missions. We utilized a single drop on modules with a high torque arm to solve both the switch, the entrance to electric, and then retrieve the cargo from the plane. We also wrote down pseudo code similar to this for every mission run we did. This helped us make easy changes and work out the robot schematics before spending the extra time coding everything up. This is our strategy for run two. We use PID line following navigation to get around the chicken without hitting it, and our robot used its color sensors to determine where it was on the board. The tape you see was used to track how accurately our na robot navigated each turn so we could tune the code until we had a high consistency. This is the longest and most risky run. In run 3, we wanted to make sure that we get as many missions done as possible before ending at accidental avoidance. Our robot consistently uses the color sensors to track where it is located on the table and align it off of walls, lines, and mission structures. We used the waterfall process for the robot build and spiral development for the software. Before building the robot, we evaluated game roles and mission requirements and documented 18 requirements we wanted our robot to meet. These are our robots Tanjiro and Simp. We kept both robots in matching configuration which allowed us to send robots home with team members and work in parallel. We used LEGO Studio CAD to design different robot ideas so team members who didn't have access to all the LEGOs could try out ideas. The final robot design instructions from the CAD were used to keep the robots in exact configuration. Module design for Run 1 was originally a high torque version of our Run 3 module. The team adapted it to solve new missions. This is our Run 2 module. The team had a challenge with the large cargo falling off the module and came up with an innovative solution using rubber lego parts to better grab the module. We also used a passive dropper which used the mission doorstep to trigger the package to fall ensuring it was always in the correct position. Our module for run 3 is our most complex. It uses two motors, controls arms on three sides of the robot, and solves nine missions. Our team decided to learn Python and challenge ourselves with the new code language. We learned from the team Failure Architects that Pybricks has built-in libraries which allow for soft start and stop, which allow for more precise navigation. We also tried to learn the configuration management tool, GitHub. This tool had professional features for software development, but learning both Python and GitHub fully was beyond what we had time for. We stuck to emailing the code until we can get more time to learn this tool. We coded up many functions in Python that we could call and use over and over for rapid programming of bot runs. Organizing our code into reusable functions made programming things for line follow easier. We kept key variables like speed and critical gain as inputs to the functions. Here are some example codes. By using comments and clear function names, the code is easy to understand and follow. This helped maintain the code and troubleshoot. We found a PID tutorial online and learned to write efficient proportional integral derivative feedback code. We used this code to fix unreliable motor steering by correcting navigation to work with the color sensors to improve line following. Because Pybrick is still in beta release, we had to program our own bootloaders to manage the robot runs. All you have to do is select the run number and hit enter to run each program. The display shows when the robot is running and when it is done. We did lots of consistency testing using various ways to document the results. Here are some examples. We also did lots of positive tracking using masking tape directly on the table. This is critical to make sure our strategy of accurate navigation and precision was achieved. A big innovation for the team was raising the color sensors so they could get a smoother input to the PID line following code. Our run accuracy improved once we built an alignment fixture so we could launch from the same spot every time. This slide shows our drop-in module design started and ended. This was a tricky Lego part to build to make sure the module would drop on the robot quickly each time without directly attaching. This pattern was evolved and tested many times before it was then used for all other mission modules. Thank you.